In Chapter 7 of the Fathers of Nations novel, we get to see a detailed look at the events during Banjul's Heads of State Summit. The hosting president, who also happens to be the president of the Gambia, opens the meeting by engaging in light-hearted conversation with a select group of heads of state, honoring them based on their country's influence. Heads of delegation, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you warm greetings from the people of the Gambia. The host president first talks to the Nigerian head of state. He talks about Nigeria's large population and its influence. This demonstrates the lasting importance of population size in a country, even though it's less crucial in today's world compared to centuries ago, when it determined the strength of armies. This principle still explains why nations like China remain strong. The Nigerian president is described as a distinguished 70-year-old retired general. Pastor Chiamaka from the Agency for Governance and Development in Africa had earlier given him strict and clear instructions not to interfere in the summit and he followed these orders. Chiamaka noted that the Nigerian president looked more majestic in his sky-blue clothes than his counterpart in plain white cotton, wishing for his effective leadership. After talking to the Nigerian president, the host president talks to his South African counterpart. He emphasizes that even though South Africa is not on par with the global tech leaders, such as the United States, it still leads in terms of technology on the African continent. The host president further engages in a conversation with the Kenyan president. He acknowledges that Kenya enjoys protection due to its close alliance with America. This prevents any form of bullying within the country. The conversation between the host and the Kenyan president leads to an invitation for a state visit. Professor Kimani, who had experienced personal losses, watched from the back of the hall with dislike toward the Kenyan government. The host president also talks with the Zimbabwean president. The Zimbabwean ruler was known for having a stubborn trait. On one occasion, during a highly attended United Nations assembly, he openly criticized America and Britain, even though they had the power to cause immense damage to his country. Not ask for any inch of Europe or any square inch of that territory. So, Blair, keep your England and let me keep my Zimbabwe. Comrade Malusi frowned at the president for causing the deaths of hundreds, including his wife, and for driving Zimbabweans out of their homes using bulldozers. Lastly, his talks with the Libyan head of state involve a straightforward refusal to follow the imposed rules by the Libyan head of state. When his followers planted a bomb that caused a Pan American Global Airlines plane to explode, resulting in the deaths of 300 passengers. He was required to hand over the individuals responsible and provide compensation to the victims' families. However, the Libyan ruler rejected these terms. Engineer Tahir strongly disliked the Libyan president, believing he had surrendered to Western powers. We leave it here for today. If you liked our video, subscribe, like, and share to be the first to watch the next video.